Originally hailing from Mexico, the taco is a hand-sized food that usually combines seasoned meat, vegetables, and other tasty fillings in a rolled corn or flour tortilla. Tacos are cheap, filling, and easy to make. But the real beauty of the taco is its variety. A taco for all seasons, so to speak. So, today we're going to take a look at every style of taco we could find. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Foods channel. After that, please leave a comment and let us know what other foods you would like to hear about. Now, as far as we're concerned, every day is Taco Tuesday. Ever wonder who first came up with the taco? Well, we don't know their name, sorry. But they were probably a Mexican cowboy, and what they made was like a carne asada taco. Dating back to the 1500s, carne asada is believed to be the very first taco. Carne asada means grilled meat in Spanish. In the original version would have been steak, sliced thin, cooked over hot coals, and placed in a corn tortilla, with goodies like onions, chili peppers, guacamole, and lime. Now one of the most common types of street-style tacos, the recipe hasn't really changed all that much over the years. Because if it ain't broke... Since the dawn of human civilization, people have loved fish. The food, not the jam band. We're talking about the kind of fish you'll find in Tacos de Pescado. The first Tacos de Pescado were made in Baja, California, which is actually in Mexico, and they're commonly found in coastal regions, where fish are plentiful, which is why you shouldn't order them in, uh, say, Kansas. These bad boys are usually made from a fried or grilled whitefish filet with pico de gallo salsa, lettuce, and sour cream. Or for those who like to live a little, citrusy mayo. As a bonus, the same recipe works just as well with tacos de camarones, aka shrimp. So places that sell one usually sell the other. The Caribbean has contributed a lot more to the world than the setting for a series of pirate movies. For example, the style of meat preparation known as barbacoa. Barbacoa involves wrapping beef, lamb, mutton, or goat in leaves, and then burying it in a hot stone pit. The technique eventually made its way to Mexico, where folks took to coating the meat in local sauces known as mole, as well as things like ancho chili peppers, dried guajillo, and Mexican oregano. Speaking of taco-related intercultural cooperation, tacos arabes are what you might get if Mexican food joined forces with Lebanese food. They're made from spit-roasted meats stuffed into a flour tortilla, as opposed to the more typical corn tortilla. And they trace their origin to an influx of Lebanese immigrants to the Puebla region back in the 1930s. Not surprisingly, they're similar to the Lebanese dish of roast lamb shawarma served on pita bread. These days, they're often made with marinated pork and flavored with Mexican lime juice and spicy chipotle salsa. Fry bread was developed by the indigenous people of the American Southwest in the early 19th century. After having their traditional lands seized by the U.S. government, many wound up imprisoned in military forts where they invented fry bread to make the best of their meager supplies of lard, flour, and cheese. To their creators, Navajo tacos, also known as fry bread tacos, are a moving symbol of perseverance through adversity. And they're also pretty tasty. Commonly found in the southwestern U.S., they're usually topped with ground beef, chili beans, lettuce, tomatoes, and shredded cheese. Tacos al Pastor is basically the rambunctious son of Tacos Arabes, although it's managed to step out of its pappy's shadow to become its own taco. Like their ancestor, Tacos El Pastor use a filling made from thin shavings of spit-roasted pork, seasoned with things like salt, cumin, garlic, chipotle powder, and oregano. But in a bold stroke of genius, chopped pineapple was thrown into the mix. The pineapple adds a bit of tanginess to the whole affair and balances out the spiciness of the pork. Today, it is one of the most common types of taco you'll find in Mexico City. Cabeza means head. And tacos de cabeza are, just as the name implies, made from the heads of animals, usually pigs or cows. Basically, you steam the head overnight, then shred it into solid meat, or maciza, and soft meat, or offal, which admittedly is not the most appetizing word. These dishes can be prepared in many ways depending on the cut of meat, but one could start by simmering the meat with ingredients like peppercorns, achiote, 
and or avocado leaves. Then putting it in a tortilla with toppings like onion and cilantro. Take our word for it, this one is head and shoulders above the rest. Well, maybe not shoulders. Nobody's out here eating shoulders. One of the reasons the first tacos emerged in the 1500s is because, before Spanish colonialism, the inhabitants of the Americas didn't really have livestock to make meat fillings. But what they did have was lots and lots of corn. And from corn, you make huitlacoche, also known as Mexican truffle, corn smut, and corn mushroom. That is a lot of aliases for corn. What is it hiding? Technically speaking, huitlacoche is a rare fungus sometimes found growing on organic corn. It tastes similar to a mushroom, but a little sweeter. They're usually served in a corn tortilla with sautéed onions, chopped garlic, salt, and occasionally a few episota leaves. Thanks to Opera for sponsoring this video. Hey, weird historians! Have you been circumnavigating the globe like Magellan in search of a better way to browse the internet? Opera Browser is faster, safer, and smarter than default browsers, and is fully featured for privacy, security, and everything you do online. Plus, you can greatly expand your capabilities with Aria, Opera's native browser AI, providing real-time information directly from the web, generating content based on your ideas in a few clicks, and summarizing, exploring, or even translating any text online. Opera lets you experience faster load times and distraction-free browsing with one-click ad blocking. And you can enjoy private, secure browsing by hiding your location with Opera's free built-in VPN. No extensions required. Opera can even extend your laptop's battery life by up to one hour, letting you stay online longer. Download Opera now. Just follow the link in the description and pinned content, or head to this tracking link to get started. And now, back to the video. Chorizo is another culinary legacy of the Spanish colonization of the Americas. But make no mistake, Mexican chorizo is very different from Spanish chorizo. For example, where Spanish chorizo is seasoned with paprika, sold cooked and cured, its Mexican counterpart is usually seasoned with chili peppers and sold fresh, uncured, and uncooked. And where Spanish chorizo is eaten on charcuterie boards, Mexican chorizo is great for tacos. To prepare it, the chorizo is removed from its casing, cooked, and put in a tortilla with seasonings like garlic, paprika, cloves, cinnamon, bright red pepper, guajillo chili, vinegar, and Mexican oregano. To describe its taste, we'll borrow a phrase. Es muy bueno. Given that Korean tacos are a blend of Korean and Mexican cuisine, you'd figure they'd probably come from one of those two places, but you would be wrong. Korean tacos actually come from California, particularly the Los Angeles communities where Korean and Mexican families have long lived side by side. True to their name, Korean tacos are usually filled with Korean ingredients like kimchi and bulgogi beef, as well as things like purple cabbage, fresh cilantro, and diced avocado. These culinary cultural mashups first became popular among patrons of Los Angeles taco trucks, like the famous Kogi barbecue trucks founded by K-Mex taco godfather Roy Choi in 2008. Behold, the breakfast taco. Eggs and yellow cheese in a soft taco shell. But that's just the base. Depending on how you order it, these morning treats can also come with the kind of ingredients you might find in an omelet. So who do we thank for stuffing an entire day's meal into a soft shell? Although they do technically trace their origins across the Rio Grande to Mexico, the breakfast taco as we know it today was largely invented by exactly who you'd think. Texans. Everything's bigger there. Even breakfast. What if you like tacos, but you're not so much into beef, or pork, or goat, or lamb? Well, we won't call you chicken, but we might serve you some, in the form of tinga tacos, also known as tacos de pollo. Pollo, of course, is chicken, and the shredded chicken thighs in a tinga taco are usually prepared in a stew of smoky chipotle chilies, oregano, onion, garlic, tomatoes, bay leaf, raw cane sugar, and thyme. Tinga tacos, which come from the Puebla region of Mexico, are usually served in a tortilla with chopped onion, lime, and avocado slices, or sour cream. Just be careful serving one to Marty McFly. Nobody gives him chicken. 
Birria is chilled braised with pulled goat or beef as its primary ingredient, stewed in adobo, onions, tomatoes, and peppers. Take that meat, stuff it in a corn tortilla with some onion, cilantro, and maybe some cheese, and you've got yourself tacos de birria. The best part? It's served with its own braising liquid, which can then be used as a dipping sauce. How's that for ingenuity? We'd like to imagine that Tacos Gobernador, which translates to the governor's tacos, are named after Arnold Schwarzenegger, but they are not. They're named after Sinaloan governor Francisco La Bastida Ochoa, whom we're pretty sure has never been in a Terminator movie. But don't let the lack of connection to Planet Hollywood stop you from trying them. Tacos Gobernador are shrimp, onions, tomatoes, coriander, and grated cheese in a warm tortilla, folded in half and griddled with a butter glaze. Popular in Baja, they're usually served with hot chili sauce and lime wedges. And if you were trying to get us to vote you into the Gobernador's mansion, bribing us with a few of these isn't the bad place to start. If you're a more adventurous eater, you could try your hand at some Tacos de Chapolinas, which swaps more traditional fillings like steak or pork with grasshoppers. Roasted grasshoppers, to be precise. While roasted grasshoppers are an unusual menu item in the U.S., they have long been a protein staple in Oaxaca, Mexico. The grasshoppers can be cooked in lemon, lime, chili, and other spices. And common toppings include guacamole and pipián, a sauce made from chili, tomato, and pumpkin seeds. Chepulinas are low in fat, and sprinkling a few of them into a taco will ensure it remains crunchy until the last bite. And of course, if grasshoppers aren't in your diet, there is at least one other way to get a crunchy taco. If you ask your average American to picture a taco, it'll probably be in a hard shell. That's because, thanks greatly to the almost frightening success of Taco Bell, hard shell tacos have long since replaced soft tacos as the standard in the United States. Closer to Mexican tacos dorados than traditional Mexican tacos, hard shell tacos are deep fried or baked into a permanent U-like pocket shape. Ingredients like meat, lettuce, and cheese are then piled into the relatively brittle container, and the consumer then tries to eat it without cracking it into a way that spills everything all over the place. It's deliciously inefficient, but nothing beats that satisfying crunch. So what do you think? What's your favorite style of taco? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.